What's up, everybody? It is more modern action, this time for our Thursday gameplay stuff, and we've got two combo decks in store for you today. Trying to shift gears, we've got lots of cool uh, matches in the queue for you guys to be able to enjoy. Some controlled matches, some more Merc Tide matches, some more Amulet matches, some more creativity matches. We got a lot of fun, fun decks uh, swirling around there, but uh, how you guys been enjoying Modern? You know, if anyone's watching and you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. We're getting real close to that 1,000 mark, so any support would be greatly appreciated. Or just show other people the video. That's an easy way to do it for free, right? Actually, it doesn't cost money to subscribe on YouTube, so, you you know. We're not we're not doing very much of the m coverage on Twitch at the moment. We're still doing some coverage and stuff on the weekends if you guys want to check out stuff. All the links are in the description as well as information about the deck list. All of that's on the Mox field. You can, of course, follow over there, but see stuff. Um, usually the lists come up without, within a day or two after the video. If, for some reason, they haven't been posted up yet, spam the comments. Let me know, and I'll post them up. Oftentimes, you know, real life gets all-consuming, and I forget. So the comments are, are super helpful in that. But we've got two decks. Selesnia Life Gain. Um, there's probably other names for it. It's basically just saying, hey, what combos can i put in here dealing with plus one counters uh that are within green and white and i'm just gonna jam it all into one deck that's that's the way it's kind of set up here uh, creativity we featured a couple times on the channel it is that combo deck where you cast indomitable creativity or transmogify you're getting rid of your tokens and turning them into big things like archon of cruelties or sideboard stuff you have other things like iona elish norns terastodons things like that but we're gonna see how things work out here as both deck are trying to kind of combo and assemble some sort of crazy power going on here. So we're going to see how things work out. Uh, it's Celestia Life Gain is probably the last true collected company deck in modern. All right. Um, most of the decks are, are running around and doing like chord based stuff, but this is one of those true tried and true collected company style decks now guide of souls is in here some lists are running it some are not uh, of course our resident celestia life game player has been trying it out it's because it's a great way to trigger heliod it's a great way to just also have a threat if you're just like well i'm just going to play creatures and be able to just kind of you know fly at you and try to get you that way players joking about like all right i'm going to stop at every step and uh then finally I'll pass priority. You know, just a little little friendly banter. That's kind of the fun sh stuff about uh, hanging out at our shop is a lot of players have been coming there for years, so we know each other, so we can sit here and mess around with each other. And not, Some days we're, we're a little bit more serious, more locked in. Some days we're a little bit more laid back. There's the Heliod, like we said, ways to kind of start the life gain and Galvanic Discharge. Also, we're, do we're trying out in this one uh, cards on both sides. Let me know what you think about it. Basically, we're just trying to show which player is the one that is casting the spells. If the cards show up on the left, it's the player on the left. If the cards show up on the right, it's the player on the right. Uh, other videos, we've done it where it's just like we've picked a side. All the cards are going to show up on the right-hand side today. All the cards are going to show up on the left-hand side. Or is showing both sides too busy and too distracting? Let me know. What do you think? Do you like having kind of the stack be represented that way or do you prefer just to have one card up at a time all right getting things ready that's one thing about the creativity list it runs on so many lands and you really kind of are trying to set up do a lot of fetching because you do care a little bit about the domain aspect And sort of just kind of land go from these players. We're seeing a lot more setup here right now from our Selesnia player. Like, they've already got Heliod out. So now they're just kind of waiting for the coast to become clear, essentially, to really just kind of commit. Also, four mana is that sweet spot because Collected Company is in the list. But Surveil Lands still popping up. Again, if you have not picked them up, you should look into it. They're amazing. You know, definitely worth picking up for. I still, there's a couple that I haven't picked up yet. Which one is? Probably the red white one's the one that I haven't picked up yet because I'm not really doing too. No, that's a lie. I do have two because I'm running them in my Jeskai control list. Um, I'm only running one in, the, in that list, but I did pick those up. 
what color am I not playing? Maybe the green white one I don't have. I don't know. But Eldamri's call here. This is a nice little instant speed. Search for a creature, reveal, put it to your hand. Uh, so you're basically just saying, hey, I would like to go find a combo piece. Right? That's it's a great card to have in the list. Kind of helps you set things up and just kind of tutor up for what you need. And because you have so many different combos that rely on the plus one counters you're kind of trying to really set yourself up in this case we're just looking for a way to help trigger our heliot and there is a three card combo that you can be able to do if you've got uh, access to our guide of souls and heliod and then you of course can be able to go for that basking uh brood scale we did see a just pure brood scale uh combo deck previously this of course this listening life gain is running brood scale as well at, so like there's so many different combos it's also running uh, of course just like the heliod walking ballista combo it's got spike feeder in here it's running um another combo to scurry oaks so it's basically just saying hey this, these are all combos why don't i just jam it all into one deck and see what happens but yeah both players are just kind of in this land go mode Losing some life. Also, because we're tracking it uh, post-life stuff, there might be some uh, mix-ups and mess-ups here, but we'll see. Guide of Souls. Energy is powerful. You know, There's not as much energy sink into this, but really you're hoping for the gain one life. Also, the two toughness is relevant, uh, as well as having an energy sink if you just play a bunch of creatures to give something flying. So, like, Guide of Souls is, is kind of the best version of the gain of life when a creature enters that you know out of all the those type effects that exist in modern right now yeah we're spending a lot more time talking about the selesnia life gain deck compared to the creativity because the creativity is much more passive right now we're we're still in the kind of big setup stages here and that's the interesting thing about creativity is it's very focused on like Let's try to filter our draws. We'll have reactions to what you're doing. If there's something that like matters, then I can start doing this. If I need to start going off, I can make tokens and then pop them and turn them into stuff. So, you know, we're going to see as we're getting closer and closer to the stages where creativity is going to have to make a move. Okay, so we're getting our first planeswalker out here. Of course, creativity does run both uh, Renin Six and Teferi Time Raveler in here as our Planeswalkers of choice. And there's our first Renin Six to hit the field. Gives us more lands back. Could deal damage. That's irrelevant in this matchup here. For the most part, things are going to have two toughness from the, a lot of the creatures that are created. Now, five mana is a little bit uh, scary, so... We're going to try to get a Court of Calling on the end step here. Or, sorry, Court of Calling Collected Company. Do some more fetching. I believe we had a reprieve in hand, or we will be attempting to reprieve. Or we could be responding and trying to get rid of the Guide of Souls and do stuff like that. Because if the right pieces pop up, like we could just combo on the end step here. So we'll get a little Dwarf. And there's the reprieve. So this is like a setup. Hey, let's try to delay things. We still have one mana left. Um, and it's the Jetmere Garden. So we could potentially be able to, you know, hit with the Leyline Binding there. But there's the bra uh, the Basking Brood Scale. So this is the, the, the combo here. If you disrupt it so there's going to be some discussions and talking out because again here, here's one of the three card combos that exists within this life game deck basking brood scales out enters you'll gain a life off of guide of souls which will trigger heliod putting a plus one counter on a creature which you'll put it on brood scale when a plus one counter is put on it you get to create a eldrazi spawn triggering our lovely little guide of souls, which then triggers Heliod, which then creates another one because you'll be putting another plus one counter on a basking brood scale. So you just go through that little loop there. Boop, 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 boop. And we have the response to the basking coming and we'll hit it with the ley line binding here.
All right, we've got our energy. That still does, of course, trigger. We could still try to push this fight here, like adapt it and get ourselves a spawn, you know, get another energy, gain some more life. Looks like that is going to be the play. So still have two mana available, essentially. I mean, getting the energy and getting the life is relevant. I mean, if we could play another creature here. Oh, a second one. Okay. That's pretty good. Guide of Soul is going to come in. Let's, of course, uh, put some two counters on it, give it flying. And look at this little flying token. We love it. And we're actually going to fly at Ren and Six here, just kind of weaken him down a little bit there. So, again, there is one token. So now we're in this kind of danger zone, right? Our creativity player was trying to set up for, for this. They're hoping to transmogify. They're hoping to indomitable creativity here. There's a fetch. Are we getting another dwarf? Yep, there it is. Do we have the creativity? He says, I've got no responses right now to you potentially playing the, the namesake of your deck, the card that's the namesake of your deck. <laughs> Fable the Mirror Breaker coming out. So we're going to get a nice little 2-2 Goblin Shaman. That one attacks. You make a treasure. So continue to make tokens. But that should be a little bit of a sigh of relief. If your creativity player is spending their time doing that, that means they don't have creativity yet. And they're just trying to, like, set up and hopefully drag it out longer. They've got some interaction and stuff they can do in their hand but like this is this is a tough spot for them to to be in right now okay we've got a collected company now no reprieve to respond to this so we're going to be able to look at our top six cards and then put two creatures Convert a mana cost three or less, which is really dangerous and really scary when you're in a deck like this. Okay, Spike Feeder is a nice one. And, oh, Rosie. Okay, so um, this is the other set of combo stuff. Rosie enters, will create a food token which will allow us to put a plus one counter on a creature, which would put it on our brood scale here. Then we'll make a Eldrazi spawn, which then would put a plus one counter on it because remember, whenever a token enters, you go. So we're going to see a little bit of response. Let's try to shoot this out of the sky with the paw patch formation here. So at least we're making sure that our opponent does not gain infinite life here, right? Or it wouldn't be infinite. They would pick a number and they'd say like 5 billion life or something to stop. And like, cool, you can have creativity and arc on me all day, but I'm going to have a billion life and, and try to stop you. Uh, so here we go. There's the food token that's created. Non-adapted one first. And we'll just do this back and forth. Ping, 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 ping. Make a, a token. Put a plus one counter on this. Make a token. Put a plus one counter on this. Make a token. And go uh, until we get to an um, insane number, right? Now, if we had our Guide of Souls or something like that, we would be gaining life. And then, of course, if you had Heliod out as well, it would just kind of snowball even more. And you could just be able to just put it on all, all the things and all the stuff. Um So let's see what they end up deciding. I like the way that, that like they were debating about this and saying, okay, I'm going to put 111 
counters on these because it's easy to represent uh, on dice and for camera. So thank you for, for doing that. That's great. Uh, then we get essentially, you know, the player says I get 222 Eldrazi spawns. Technically, if we're counting it up, it's 221 because one of the brood scales had a counter on it already. It doesn't really matter because we're going to dump all this into a walking ballista and shoot our opponent and win the game there. So that's the power of the combo nest here. So you just are like, well, it's a bunch of redundancies within it. Like, <laughs> there's, <laughs> it's a foil of it. That's cool. But walking ballista, real good card in modern. Uh, but that's going to be game one going to our Celestia Life game player. Now we get to kind of go into sideboard stuff. You already see some options and stuff. We, again, cut our sideboard stuff and go right into the games because sometimes sideboarding can take a couple of minutes and we're not doing live coverage, so we don't need to worry about that, right? We could talk about it and have more discussions of what sideboard stuff looks like, what players are going to be bringing in for these sort of matchups here. I mean, the big thing is, like, you're going to bring in a lot more scary creatures to be able to hit off of uh, your creativity. But a Utopian Sprawl to start things out. Ramp, ramp, ramp. We're going to see some fetching setting ourselves up here with a nice little surveil. Now, Modern is very much dependent on who gets to go first. That is a big part of, of how the, the game is played at the moment in time. Or at least the way that I, the decks that I'm playing. I don't know if you guys are feeling the same way, but there's many, many games feel very even, but you just get these slight edges by just being able to go first. All right, dropping down to 18, but have access to three mana here, and starting off with a Heliod, which is really nice. The indestructibility of it is super, super helpful. More setups here for our creativity player. Oh, we did get to see a little bit of a counter spell. Kind of the go to card that's in everybody's uh, board at this point. Some are even running at main boards, the consigned to memory. A card that, like, we'll see a little bit less play, I'm guessing, after. December when the one ring has the potential to get banned. I I'm expecting that to go. I expect Flage to probably go. Like there's a couple of cards that are on my radar of like these have a very strong potential to go, but I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, we're going to attempt to combo off immediately here. So we talked about like the way that you just are running redundancy. So Scurry Oaks has the evolve, but also whenever one or more plus one counters are put on Scurry Oaks, you create a green squirrel token now with our of course guide of souls you're going to gain a life which will trigger heliod which will put a plus one counter on scurry oaks which will then create a squirrel causing guide of souls to gain you a life which will cause heliod to put an additional plus one counter on scurry oaks and then you just kind of fill your board with squirrels and then pass turn and go okay uh if you cannot stop me i'm going to attack you with a million billion squirrels so we will see. The, of course, there's the discussion because that's the thing about this these decks, like the way that they're set up and the way that they work is, you know, you have to like make sense of of the shenanigans that are that are here and the three card combos that exist within, you know, the deck. So it's like, okay, so here's how this is working. We'll let it resolve. So Guide of Souls trigger goes on the stack. That has to resolve before anything else goes. So this is like we're going to try to push this marble down this uh, little ramp here to start the kind of Rue Goldberg machine of squirrel making. And we go, nope, we're going to just counter that. Consign to memory. Counter target triggered ability. No more. We get the energy token ready, but we do not gain any energy because we stop the trigger in its tracks. So now it's up to the creativity player to try to respond and put a stop to things. This is, oh no. <laughs> and oh no is right, because there's four mana. We're going to be transmogifying here and going to go flipping and revealing. What do we get? I've seen some card sideboard cards coming in here. Orange Chant. 
Anger of God's also there. Oh my gosh. Just kidding, we sideboarded everything out. <laughs> okay, there it is. There's the creativity. E hit. We get the Archon of Cruelty coming out. So this will be nice because it forces our opponent to sacrifice one of their creatures, make them discard a card. They're going to lose three life. We gain three life. So opting to get rid of the Scurry Oaks. There's the pass. All right, so there's another Heliod. There's our tutor effect, Eldramri's Call, and Walking Ballista in hand. Now, Walking Ballista cast triggers, puts another plus one counter on it. All right, after the match, our Selesny Life Game player came up and said, I missed lethal with a walking ballista in game two because I cast it for four mana. And this was that moment. So here's how this works. Here's that lethal. If anybody else noticed it before this happened, all right, before I mentioned it, if you cast walking ballista on for, for two mana there, all right, instead of the four, all right, you could cast your utopian sprawl, cast it out. It'll trigger off of your guide of souls putting an extra counter on it putting it to two counters you have two mana still left to give it lifelink with walking ballista or, or with your heliod and then you get to combo that way all right so again whenever a creature uh gains life or whenever you gain life you get to put a plus one counter on target creature you control so you can be like okay my walking ballista i will remove a plus one counter to deal one damage to target creature or player, you'll deal damage to the player, but it'll be a, through lifelink damage, triggering Heliod, putting an extra counter, and you get to kind of machine gun them down there. So that's that boom, 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 boom. They're dead. So that was just that miss uh, lethal moment there, which is so frustrating to like, you know, notice it in the moment right after you do it and go, ah. Oh. I can't believe that I, I miscalculated and, and missed that trigger that would have got the win there. And, you know, that happens. Part of it, too, is, like, the reason we play Magic is to learn and sit here and get better and improve and learn our decks better and find these lines that we go, okay, I made this mistake. It's active in my mind now that when I have these pieces... I don't need to commit as much resources. I know that I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. Or at least that's what I tell myself when I'm making mistakes in games. I actively try to sit here and think about that moment and make sure that the cards that I'm seeing do not get me into that same mistake a second time. All right, so we're going to go for the Eldamri's Call here. We had, of course, Leyline Binding, getting rid of Heliod. So now we're in this weird, awkward spot, it's especially so because we're staring down lethal. Uh, we have to be able to find a flyer here to stop ourselves from dying. A, you know, we, we're in this, this rough spot. The ley line binding is, uh, is too much. If we had another land, I guess, already out, we could just... I don't There's nothing we could have done here to, to stop ourselves at this point. Um, I guess you have to tutor for something. But, you know, you have, of course, nine damage that we're staring down here. Guide of Souls. Let's gain some life. Now, if there was no trigger, if you have a second creature, you could be sitting at, you know, one life, but the, we do have the three damage off the attack trigger, so there is that that downside to, to this line here. But, you know, tough, tough, tough. Especially because it's like, dang it, I had this game one. I'm already up a game, and if I had just cast Walking Ballista for two, the, the game would be over. Move into combat. Let's swing in for three. Send in a message. Guide of Souls. And an Arbor Elf. That'll, of course, get us some more energy. Get us some more life. I 
like the Guide of Souls in this deck. I think it's cool. Like, it just it helps you to trigger and set things up a little bit easier. I know some lists are running, like, Conclave Mentors and, and things like that, but some lists are also running, like, Ranger Captain of Eos, so you can be able to search a little bit more for the things that you need. It also, the Ranger Captain's nice because, you know, your opponent can't cast non-creature spells, so you can kind of do some sacrificing effects and help to protect you. But, I, you know, yeah, that's that's a tough one. Them's the beats, though. So now we're going to be going into game three, doing a little bit more sideboardy action uh, that we'll just kind of skip right over as we get into the third and final game here for these players. Because, of course, we are doing best of ones. Maybe one day, when if we uh, have the time, we'll do another uh, kind of seasonal adventure we do like a 10 week long season or or less who knows we'll see won't be during the school year though it would have to be a summertime adventure where not everybody's able to come out as much but you know makes it easier for some players that are in the area maybe they're off for summer like me that full-time teaching life becomes tough during the 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 regular weeks of being like, ah, I cannot stay out and won't play every single round because I'm an old man and have to get up and teach. Starting things off, though, with an Arbor Elf, which is very cool in this list. We saw the Utopian Sprawl, so having the Arbor Elf in there to just kind of get a huge burst of mana is really nice. All right, so we said a uh, past turn, but then our Celestial Life game said, I know, I'm just thinking right now. And they're thinking because they're about to do something that I've seen nobody do. <laughs> force of Virtue. I could not even have told you what the White Force had done up until playing a match against this player. I was like, oh yeah, there's they made all of the, the Force cycles, right? I'm so used to Force of Negation, Force of Vigor, right? I just... <laughs> Of course, yeah. Who who would have thought there was an anthem one there that I should be worried about? <laughs> so now we're on plan C, it looks like, with the way the deck is set up, is we're just going to go aggro plan and try to go for the beats. But we do have the Utopian Sprawl, which is nice. So we've got a heavy mana source. Now, Creativity is doing their th normal thing of trying to get things set up here. The orange chance in hand, though. Yeah, so there's, of course, galvanic discharges and other things you could do, but you want to try to save those. You know, you want to try to save those prismatic endings, ley line bindings, stat static prisms for things that, like, are more impactful. Like, getting beat by a 2 2 is not that, that crazy. All right, bring the beats again. There's two more damage. Interesting. And it. Oh, okay. So the player did forget to surveil because we they probably would have thrown that uh, foothills in the graveyard there. So they're getting flooded or something here i don't know the deck is usually a little bit more creature heavy right you want to have a heavier creature count if you're running collected company and stuff i wonder if you know there are some lists that are running acts of soul cauldron this list is currently not i wonder if that is a way to go because you have so many you know ways to do counter shenanigans like if a walking ballista gets countered or thrown into the graveyard or something, having an Agus the Soul Cauldron to turn all of your other creatures essentially into a walking ballista and then combo off that way could be beneficial. But then again, you know, Agus the Soul Cauldron is a little bit expensive of a card. I say expensive, like you'd probably get like I don't know how much how much is is Agus is probably yeah about thirty bucks or so, twenty five thirty bucks. 
there's it's like the life gain deck is, is a relatively cheap deck overall. I say relatively cheap because, you know, it's like six hundred dollars when you're thinking about some uh, modern decks. It's it's a little bit a little bit more expensive. Uh, and a big part of that is like the amount of one rings people are playing. But for the most part, like most lists are a thousand dollars or less like that sweet spot of 500 to a thousand dollars depending on where you're at depending on how much one rings you're running of course all that will be switching up and changing look at this orms chant response here hey you may go to your turn but you are not doing anything on your turn that just like big old nope ability here which is really nice when you're just like okay i'm taking a bunch of damage from these two twos but not that worried at the moment of what you can do if you're not able to cast spells oh fetching and shocking as well so we're going to be doing something else here which is uh scary for us because that means yep there's the paw patch formation i just want to keep calling paw paw formation paw patch formation we're going to be creating a token of course that food token that we could then turn into something scary here two cards left in hand for our selesnia life gain player and now we've got a grip full for our creativity side hoping to hit something nice if we've got uh you know if we've got the creativity here right one land and creativity could just get us into something nice could get well, okay so there's the land there's the creativity yeah, Slesnia player has no responses here, so now we're going to start flipping. <laughs> oh, gosh. Still flipping. Just kidding, we sideboarded everything out. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Chad, have you been counting how many cards have been flipped? What's your predictions? Because we're seeing a lot. How many cards do you think had to get flipped just to get this one creature? That's a that's a chunk. All right, some players are guessing thirty, but what are you thinking? Leave a comment. Let me know. We'll tell you how the exact number soon, but. Chad or Charles for helping helping. Le oh, okay, 34. All right, so a couple guesses. People are like, yeah, 35, 30, 34, exactly, uh, which is crazy. But So that's also giving that indication, oh, you're not running the Archons. You've took them out, or maybe you took some number of them out to replace for the bigger, scarier threats like Elish Norn, which just says goodbye. Uh, okay, a 1-1. One, one basking brood scale we would have loved to have had that before of course we can be able to adapt it there's a heliod yeah i guess it's like elish norn shuts down most of our combo aspect we're not going to be able to brood scale combo we're not going to be able to uh scurry oaks combo here there's a galvanic discharge now dealing the one gaining two energy here because again galvanic discharge is a weird card that it's like you cast the spell your opponents have a chance to respond you do not have to tell them how much energy you're dumping into it all right if you say i'd like to cast the spell if they say how much energy you have make sure that they know they cannot respond to it once the spell resolves so they you can't be like i'm gonna pay one energy into it to kill your creature and you go well now i will respond and give it plus one plus one that they're not able to do that the response happens uh before the spell resolves like hey if this resolves i pay two energy and do it right so just a little nuance things with galvanic discharge Now, what do you think about the space lands, the basic lands that are the space ones? I, I, I like the galaxy foiling that, like, the foil versions of them and stuff have. Um, I, have a, I have a lot of them 
non-foil that I just have in a cube at the moment. But there's there's a lot of really cool basics out there. I'm always trying to spice up my decks and pick very specific basic lands for them. But I don't know if other players are, are very particular about the lands that they use, especially basics. Uh, so we have a spike feeder, which is, again, a we'll have two counters on it and is a 1-1. One, one. We've got a, of course... Uh, <laughs> It's listening like the ley line binding is going to come out. He says, I thought you were just going to target this, so then my creatures die. Uh, getting rid of the Heliod just in case to make sure that... Because, again, there's still... As long as Heliod's out, there's still live draws with, like, Walking Ballista. Uh, right? You could just dump in, especially with the amount of mana that's up here, a Walking Ballista is still lethal. Right? Because you can be like, all right, I could pay three mana... Uh, or sorry, six mana, and now I have a three three. That's essentially a four four, uh, because of the plus one plus one, and then you are able to eventually give it life link, and then be able to go off. Right? Oh, it'll turn into a three three. Let's start shooting you down and kill you off that way with the the life link stuff. So getting rid of the Heliod makes perfect sense, and now we can try to fight over it. And boom, pop that last little enchantment that's there. Get that out of the way. And we can get into the kind of cleaning up stage of having our dwarf and Elish Norn go in for the beats. But, oh, you know, tough day. <laughs> Another Utopian Sprawl. Hey, let's try to hard cast it. Nope, you may not. There's the reprieve. Okay, well, I guess we'll... We don't, we don't need it. It's fine. We didn't, we didn't even want it. I like the idea of if you're running the Selesnya Life Gain deck to run like Gaddic Teague or things like that. You know, it's it's basically puts a stop to the creativity player being able to cast most of their stuff. Okay. Non-creature spells can convert a mana cost for or greater can't be cast. Non-creature spells with X in their mana cost can't be cast. So it's just like a nice little anti-creativity it also works out well against some of the eldrazi decks that are that are running around uh as well but i mean not not as much but like the of course the uh uh that the new scry create a bunch of eldrazi spawns kozlik's command that one shuts that down too but ah tough tough beats right you you had the uh potential win on turn uh or on game two with the uh the walking bliss didn't work out. Creativity got to do creativity things, but I like this match a lot because we got to see you know two combo decks battling it out and fighting it out there. But let me know what you guys think of the match. What do you think of the decks? Hope you guys enjoyed all the modern coverage we're bringing you guys every Monday and Thursday. But that's going to do it for this episode here. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching, everybody. And I'll see you all next game.